2.060 kilometres. That's a new length of this track. The race distance 117. 0.74 kilometres as they line up. Yeah, I mean, you know, go back to the later days of Jim Clark. I guess there's always been team orders, but as you're saying, it would really hurt you when you know you can win at home. Well, exactly. And looking at those 29 laps, this this race on the old Mickey Mouse circuit, um, as against the new Mickey Mouse circuit, used to be 40 laps, which is a real pain in the backside. You see there, second from the right in the in the centre of your picture is Kosinski, and he would be in the best position there to get into the first corner. I really don't think the pole position should be on the right hand or the left hand side of the screen as it is. Set for a start here, the Italian Grand Prix. Green flag gets waved. Lights are on. We've got a start and plenty of horsepower unleashed off that line. Let's have a look. Catalora got away well, so did Rainey. They're fighting it out into that first corner. Side by side, but one gets a little bit of a break by maybe a length. Yeah, that's Catalora, Rainey. Uh, Kosinski, Schwantz, up the inside of Kosinski, Alex Barros. And then Creville, Daryl Beatty, McDoom. So the Australians well back, but as Barry said, not too much to worry about. They can sort themselves out here. Now you see the plan from Rainey and uh, Cadalora would be to go absolutely flat stretch right from the word go because they know the Dunlop works better than the Michelin round here and uh, everybody has been having problems with the tyres, trying to get a tyre that works and not only getting one that works but works consistently and predictably. So the, the obvious thing that the Yamaha, these two are going to do is try and get away but uh, the man that could spoil their day is Kosinski. McDuan had, is making a move too. I saw him under brakes back a few corners there. He's uh, bumped himself up a couple. Yeah, he's uh, still looks like he's sitting behind Daryl Beatty. Yeah, yeah, it's there they are, the two Australians together there. Great shot as the big 500s come from one switchback angle to another, isn't it? Brilliant. And there's uh, that was Spencer just in front of Chandler there. So Spencer coming, coming a little bit better again. So Catalora out in front at the moment from Wayne Rainey. John Kosinski aboard the Kojiva. He's in third. The Yamahas are one and two. And Kevin Schwantz on the Suzuki sits right in behind him. You see, Schwantz uh, didn't qualify brilliantly, but he was saying that uh, he's not too worried about that because um, the bike is performing a hell of a lot better than it was at, uh, in Czechoslovakia. He said it was a terrible thing to ride. It wouldn't go where he wanted it to go. And it was just a real struggle. And you see this bunch at the front here, these four are pulling out on the um, pack behind them of uh, Creville. Uh, that's um, Thierry Crean, the French guy, going into the pits there. So Thierry Crean, he uh, pulls out of the race already. But this is the dog fight up in front. Kosinski holding out. Schwantz on the break. Yeah, wants to get in touch with the Yamahas. Got and will now get his chance. Yeah, and Schwantz has got to do that. You know, there's there's no doubt whatsoever that Schwantz has to get up and he's got to fight with Rainey because um, he's got to push Rainey absolutely to the limit. And all I hope is that um, uh, neither, neither rider's tyres let them down because uh, it'd just be nice to see a real good straight fight. Actually, this is uh, the whole three divisions tonight very, very important in as much as the championships could be won and lost here. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's you now we've, we've heard all this before. Mick was leading by 53 points, you know, so I'm not interested in the one and lost. Thing. You know, it's not over till it's over. As far as I'm concerned, there's 75 points up for grabs in the next three races. Exactly. And, um, you know, until you get to the last race and some guy's got 26, then he's, you know, it's still open. So Catalore at the moment, he's the hare. The hounds are chasing. Rainey right in behind him now with... Our belief is that Catalora will not be allowed to win this race because <laughs> Rainey has to, to, uh, to build on his championship lead. But Catalora may not be listening to that information. At the moment, he's out in front and doing it well. In It's just sad that Catalora really doesn't have uh, another place to go. As far as I can see, judging by all the stuff I read in uh, the Italian press, that looks that's on board one of the Hondas. It, I think it's on board Beatty's bike. Yeah, and Beatty... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Ball Beatty's bike. You see there, he's up behind Creville, slipstream. Yes, get past Creville. So, one Australian on the move. McDoan, as I said, had bumped himself up into sixth spot. I noticed uh, under brakes, he made up three or four places back a couple of laps ago. The Yamahas, though, it's a real street fight for them out in front. Catalora still leading Rainey. Kosinski on the Kajiva sitting back. Right, Rainey out the slipstream. 
just as easy as that. Rainy, yeah, slipped underneath there while we were uh, back looking at the pack. That's so look nice at the back move. wheel. Look at the back yeah. wheel. Yeah. That's what you call. It just goes da 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 da. As you're braking, you're changing down, and uh, you're changing back the gears and the the because the engine's been told to rev up quickly and it doesn't want to. It just locks the back wheel momentarily. Nice move, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, you know, but uh, I think you'll find that uh, Catalora is going to put everything into this because he wants everybody uh, to re to re-endorse to everybody that, yes, I can ride a 500. I feel sorry for Catalora, really, because basically he doesn't really have any options open for next season apart from the Roberts team. By what I read in the Italian press, um, Chandler would dearly, uh, dearly love to be back on a Yamaha, and as far as I can see, um, Kajiva would um, be happier to be rid of Chandler. And um, for the ideal thing would be to do a swap for Catalora to go to Kajiva and um, Chandler to go to um, Yamaha. There's something going on here. Yeah, replay here. Oh, yes, on the brakes, lost it, on the brakes. That's a mystery man. <laughs> I don't know. I give up. Yeah, one of the wildcard entries by the look of it. Just nestling into the gravel there, not hurt. That was unusual, actually, because that um, section there... Um, oh, I tell you what he could have done. You go into that, there's about four changes of um, tar, different bitumen and that. And you get on the brakes and you feel the front wheel just about locking. And then you get on another section of tar where it grips really good and the thing just locks up and throws you on your face. You see all the different uh, tarmacs around this place. Yeah, the way they've patched up the circuit, added to the circuit, they're all different surfaces. I'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to all the Australian servicemen serving overseas that are catching the telecast. Great to hear from you guys, and nice to know that uh, there's a little bit of Australia and a little bit of the Brit sitting beside me here, who's now an Aussie anyway, with, an, with a Pommy accent. But it's nice to know that we, uh, we go to you wherever you're serving overseas and uh, you enjoy the races. And let's hope the Australians can get the result tonight. At the moment, though, it's still Wayne Rainey out in front from Catalora. There we go with Kevin Swan sitting in third on the Suzuki. So he's got past the Kajiva of Kasitsky. Now the chase is on. He must nail Rainey. That's his mission tonight. Yeah, by the way, um, these four have pulled out um, on the bunch of Creville, etc. It looks, you see there, look, that's an enormous amount of ground. That's got to be three seconds. At the back, you, if we get a long shot, it must be at least three seconds. So Rainey building. He knows this championship with three rounds to go, I mean, really, anything can happen, and they, they, they desperately need the points as Catalora gets out of shape coming out of that, that yeah. bend there. Oh, that was, uh, that's just as you put the power on, the back wheel breaks away a bit, and then it grabs and it breaks, and what it does, it's as it, as it uh, breaks away and grabs again, it just picks the front up as it grabs, and then when the front comes down, it naturally makes the uh, handlebars shake. It looks spectacular, but it doesn't, um, doesn't feel bad at all. Rainey's really trying, and I tell you what, so is Schwantz. Well, you know, it's a case of having to. You know, Schwantz, uh, he, he must be under a lot of pressure at the moment because, uh, you know, he could all of one time the, the championship was well within grit, his grip, and now, you know, basically all he has to do is lose it, you know, in that uh, he's got to ride as hard as he can, he's got to beat Rainey, but by the same token, he's in the catch-22 situation where if he tries too hard and throws it away, people are going to say, oh, Schwantz threw it away again. I feel really sorry for Kevin Schwantz, actually. It's, uh, it certainly hasn't gone his way. Michael Doohan's bumped himself up another spot into fifth. He's lost touch with his group slightly, but he is making his way through the field. You see, the trouble is, unless... Let's just see if we get a... That is... That's a lot. That's a long way back. He'll pretty, um, pretty sure he'll catch Kosinski, but um, to to get past Kosinski and get up to this lot, you know the pace they're going and the pace they have been going in practice. That's uh, where the difficulty comes. Yeah, while we're. Uh on the subject of people watching overseas, I've had so many letters from all around Australia about uh, the sidecars and why we don't show more sidecars. We've said it a hundred times, but I'll say it a hundred and one times. Unfortunately, it comes down to owning the rights to what we can screen for you. If we own the rights to the sidecars, we'd love to put them on. But sometimes on Wild World of Sports and the Saturday program, we do show snippets for you, but that's about the best we can do. So uh, just hold the letters for a while. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you trying to say lay off me, Dad? I'd say. Yeah. We try real hard, gang, out there to give you what we can. And uh, at the moment, we're watching the 500s and Swans, his chase after Rainey. Catalora sitting in second place. I'd like to be able to see that blue bike of uh, blue and white bike of Michael Doohan's. It's not there at the moment, though. It's the red and white Yamahas and the white Suzuki that are battling it out. But he's certainly uh, he's certainly catching um, Kosinski. If you see in the back there, there. Yeah, he just got a glimpse. I don't know how I don't know how how um, lap scorer knows who these riders are. You see these flashes in the back there. It's just oh, that's beat your. Well, oh, do it. It's uh... yeah, Phil Longfield. He does a great job for us, both in Formula One and on the bikes, and uh, keeps us up to date with what happens. And it never ceases to amaze us. us. We don't know. <laughs> we sit here in awe of the man, in awe of this man too, Wayne Rainey. When the pressure's on, G delivers the goods. But you can never write Kevin Swans off. He's a marvellous competitor, and G, when he's on the money, is he great to watch? As he comes up in behind Catalora, we'll take a break. Stay with us, Australia. Plenty of action to come here from the Italian 500cc Grand Prix. So, 8 of 29 now, it's still Rady, Catalora, Swans, Kaczynski, Duan, and Creville. That's the top runners for you. Yeah, obviously that uh, onboard uh, camera shot from the Honda was onboard Mick Doohan's bike because uh, he went um, past Alex Gravel. So with, with any kind of luck, seeing the way that um, Doohan's broken away from that that sort of second pack, um, it, he should he should catch up with Kaczynski. And if he really has a good go with Kaczynski, who knows? You know, but I think the, the pressure that these three up front are putting on at the moment to catch them is going to be a very, very tall order. Yeah, it's a real street fight up front. Look at Rainey. Wheels up in the air. He's all over the bike. He really is riding very, very hard. Normally so smooth, so much in control. And he really is a pressure rider. Here's Kaczynski aboard the Kajiva. Oh, and he's doing right behind, behind him. Michael doing really challenging now. He's closed up a lot of ground. Yeah, and seeing how much he has closed up, you know, I just hope I'm. Uh, this is on board uh, Mick behind, uh, behind Kaczynski then. Uh, let's have a listen. Listen for spinning wheels. Yeah. Gotcha. So he rode with Michael Doohan as he went past John Kaczynski aboard the Kojima. Or did he? Be no. No. <laughs> no. Right, up the inside on the brakes. This goes into this left hand. It's a bit of a struggle to get past him. Right, now this is coming up to the next, this the fast three left-handers I was talking about. Now I'll just shut up and you listen and watch. Kaczynski, did he get? Yes, got him. Got so, him that time. So you see, Mick made a good job of the the la, you know, the three left-handers, especially the last one. It just gives you that little bit of a drag out the corner. And you see, now that he's got past, he's pulled out a hell of a lot of ground really quickly. Whoa! Oh, look at Rainey out me. in front, just throwing the Yamaha around. And Rainey's uh, Rainey and Cadalora have pulled away a bit from uh, Schwantz. So the two Yamahas are really going for broke. So is Michael Doohan because he's now up into fourth. You just saw him pass John Kaczynski. Brilliant bit of camera work there. Looked great. Rainey, though, has got the wick up. Here's yeah. Doohan. Go on, Michaelmas. You know, the sad thing is that uh, the... Uh, well, it's not sad for Dunlops, but um, Dunlop... Everybody's been saying that the Dunlop is definitely better than the Michelin round here. And, uh, well, it has been in qualifying and um, during the... During the pre-race practice and that but you know it's a different kettle of fish once you get in a race Daryl you know you can get a difference in temperature oh dear me who's what? that Cadalora well, it's Cadalora. Rainy 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 is down with Mr. Wallah oh, doing dear me. and he's I tell you what he's hurt too because he has not moved him ah oh, there's the hands moving up to the visor but that's been a pretty heavy shunt we're bound to get a replay of this here right it now comes. watch 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 
back end. Oh, nasty flick over the high side. Well, over the kind of... What happened, the back end broke away, and then it bit, and as you imagine, the back end going round to the left, and then going round to the right, and then pitching him over the top. So that is a very nasty prang because you go down exceptionally hard when it do, when it does that. And I wouldn't be at all surprised that the favourite with that is broken collarbones. Because what it does, you imagine you're sitting on a bike, flicks one way, flicks the other, and because you don't have any chance to put your arms out or anything, you go straight down on your shoulder. And it's a favourite for collarbones. Well, the medical team were really uh, there very quick. You could see Rainey sort of saying, just leave me alone for a second. The best, the best medical uh, squad of the lot, bar none, are in Italy. And of course, the next race is next week. Now, whether Rainey's going to be fit enough, only uh, time will tell. We have people already chasing up information on Wayne Rainey. Catalora now. And, and look at Mick. Mick is, is catching swans. So, doing on the charge, and we were looking at Mick doing there just as Rainey uh, came off the bike. Unfortunately, we, uh, we got the on-board replay, but really didn't tell a full story to us though barry's picked it pretty well it would have been nice to have seen that from uh, an outside camera but now catalora leading his own grand prix this was the dream that he wanted well this is as far as rainy is concerned it's pennies from heaven does you know it's a terrible thing to say but um you know he really does have the chance now to to prove unequivocally that he's a very very good 500 rider so it's going to be interesting to see what it's like when him and uh, kevin fight it out so the pressure now mounting on this man catalora because swans right in behind him and mick Dewan from australia closing right in on kevin swans so uh, Dewan's made up a lot of ground so far to get in touch now there they are working on rainy trackside and uh the fact that he hasn't got up barry the fact that he has we can see his arm up in the air i'd say uh he's not too well now the, the problem with that type of crash is you go you imagine it you just go down straight on your shoulder and swiftly followed by banging your head on the ground and the best thing that anybody can do is just leave you alone providing you're conscious in there it just leave you and let you become sort of compass mentis again because it, it just gives you such a whack on the floor and if he hasn't broken a collarbone or something i'll be very 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 surprised because that was a very fast part of the circuit there too. yeah it's really you, you saw it just spun out one way and flicked him back the other and normally it flicks back the other way but it just um threw him over the side the bike was going so it's a pretty nasty crash Look at John Kosinski there as he chases Mick Doohan. Since Doohan's got past to be open up a lead, but probably hasn't built much on that lead. He's having trouble just getting close enough to Swans to, to come to grips with him. He's in third place, but uh, there's the top runners. Catalora, of course, now Swans Doohan, Kosinski, Barros and Dreville. So Beattie has dropped out of that top group. Yeah, as I was saying earlier on about... Uh people like loving or hating this place you know as i said i could never get to grips with it. i was always at least a second off the pace and it's surprising how many people go there and just cannot get to grips with it for some reason or another it's just such a sort of a mickey mouse little place with no sort of uh, grip you can rely on and um it just it's the out of all the circuits you'd have to say that a lot of people don't like a lot of circuits but they still go well there a lot of people don't like that, and they just don't perform there. That's all there is to it. Well, Catalora was expected to sit in behind Rainey after his initial leading of this race. Rainey, of course, has crashed for reasons that uh, we can't really explain. And now he finds himself out in no, front. No, Schwantz. Oh, dear. Is it, am I imagining it? Or no, is... I think you're right. No, no, no. no. It could be a race of attrition. No, I think that was... No, I saw someone in the... No, there yeah, is. Yeah, he's still there. Oh, dear oh. Me, Just got a glimpse of someone... Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I saw someone touring and I thought... Look oh, after my ticket, would it? Yeah. I don't need that sort of scare. <laughs> <laughs> Swanso still sitting behind Catalora, doing... Sitting back in third place, but we haven't really had a shot, but we can see from first pack to third just how far he is. You can see Swans... You see the back end of Schwartz's yeah. bike starting to slide around now. You see it there? Yep. And uh, basically, Schwantz, you know, he's going to say, hang on a second, look, I just, I don't care. I'm quite happy sitting here. He's not going to go all out for a win because why should he? Yeah, you know, Mick's a long way back. When you look at that shot, we saw they were coming out of one set of corners and Mick was just going into the other. 
David Oliver, too, from yeah, Wentworth. Great, rainy still. Uh, still working on rainy, so obviously uh, it's going to be doubtful if he'll ride next week. We don't really want to preempt anything, but you can see that they've been working on him now for the, probably uh, five or ten minutes anyway, or ten the, minutes. The other problem is when you get flicked like that, you see, you imagine riding a bike and it goes out to the left and normally just fishtails back to the right and back to the left again, but if it flings you off to the right, then your leg's got to come off the bike in an unnatural fashion and everything. It's a horrible way to fall because you go straight on your shoulder, you bang your head, you catch your leg under the bike. It's really one of the sort of the hardest, nastiest kind of crashes you can have. Yeah, not the way that you want a championship decided. I mean, it's been a fantastic season at this point and we'd hope that uh, Rainey can stand there and fight for the championship. We'd hate to think that uh, that's put him out. Of course, we saw exactly the same sort of thing happen to Mick Dillon last year. And it just took the edge off the championship. It's been a magnificent battle so far. And uh, you'd just like to be able to see him defend it. Uh, Barry, we had a uh, uh, bike 23 coming into the pit, so another... Uh, Serge David, then it's... We had a, a kicker goal for live campaign. There's uh, a big drive on right around Australia. They were fantastic throughout the afternoon. Donated uh, over half a million. We're looking for about $4 million to build a cancer research centre here in Sydney next to the Prince Alfred Hospital. And it's uh, a cancer research center that really affects everybody in Australia because cancer in all sorts of forms affects most of us at some stage in our life or someone we know. And this, of course, will help to campaign that and fight it and find cures for it. So hope you can find time to make a donation. Any, com any Commonwealth Bank will do that. Kick a goal for life. And just before we go to the break, there's a ZZR600 rider, David Oliver. David, you owe us a donation. I promise to do it and you've done it. We'll take a break, come back. Swanstu and Kaczynski, Barris and Creville. They are the top runners for you. And there's Swanstu, you see all the track and some. You see what happened there, he came out and he really didn't want to run on the ripple strip, so he just sort of straightened the bike up and lent the other side of the bike. And that, but you basically, what you're trying to do is skate on thin ice and pussyfoot and get it back on the circuit again. You know, without running on it, he saw the grass coming up there. And uh, normally he doesn't worry too much about the grass, but when, you, when he's got at stake what he has at the moment, you know, he would be unusually paranoid about things like that. Always spectacular as Case wants. Great. If you look at the side of Catalora's bike, you'll see on one side or the other, I can't remember which side it is, I think it's the right-hand side, you'll see a big black mark on the fairing where, yes, yeah, it's, it's the right-hand side of the bike. You should see it come around here. There. See, so just above the, the sign there. And uh, that's where he's been laying the thing on its side on the fairing. And uh, he, he lays the bike over probably m more or just as much as Mick Doohan does, which Doohan cranks it over virtually more than everybody. And that really comes from uh, Luca's 250cc riding because the 250s, you can lay the bike right over. And that was one of the problems he was having with the 500 to start with. But if you look at Cadillac, he's one of the few guys that that gets his head under the screen on some corners, you know, which is so unusual for a 500. And it's still sort of him getting out of 250 mode, if you like. Well, he's out of it tonight because he's leading the 500 here, the Italian Grand Prix. Wouldn't he be uh, over the moon to win this one? Out of it, he'd be off his trolley if he wins it, I can assure you, because uh, the people uh, displaced Mizano Adriatico is right on the coast at Rimini in Italy. It's holiday season down in Italy at the moment. And everybody from all over Italy goes to the, the uh, Adriatic coast. So they'll have, you look at the amount of spectators there, they would go absolutely bananas if you want it. So Swan's coming oh, to grips yeah. back with Wayne Rainey coming to the ambulance. What do you see from those pictures there? There's no I brace well, on. He's got a brace on his neck. Yeah, but that'd be standard, wouldn't it? But yes, you know, generally speaking. And as I say, a majority of these doctors here um, um, the majority of the marshals on the corners are in actual fact doctors and surgeons that are very good friends of Claudio Costa who looked after Gardner and Doohan and um, they just come up from the Risley Institute in Bologna for the three days of the race and they just like motorcycle racing so you crash in a corner you can crash in a corner and normally 
you have maybe a marshal that knows a little bit about first aid, but these guys, you can crash at a corner, you can be a brain surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, or right whatever. It's oh, and Swansea with a big slide. We're waiting for Nick Harris uh, to give us that information as soon as he can get there, of course. With Rainey still out in the track, it's a bit hard for Nick to, uh, to know any more than we, we do. Well, but, in, actual, uh, in actual fact, they won't really know anything until um, there's the Clinica Mobile, which is a, a big sort of uh, articulated lorry that has uh, an operating theatre in there and obviously X-ray equipment. So Claudio's boys will be sort of working on Rainey as soon as he gets there. And I would imagine, hopefully, before the end of the telecast, Nick could find something out. That's what we're waiting on now, yeah. So he'll be chasing up. Well, now, Swans has closed the gap here. There's yeah. no doubt about that. He is getting closer and closer. The back markers have come into play. I think the important thing now, Daryl, is to look at, uh, to, to watch closely Schwantz's wheels. And uh, the reason I say that is because you get a rough idea how the tyres are working. On acceleration out of the corner especially, you watch the back end of Schwantz's bike. See, Cadillora's bike, nice little drift there. And uh, you see how Schwantz's bike is sort of jellying around a bit on, on braking and that. It tends, you know, I tend to think the tyres are getting a little bit hot. You saw him have a, have a bit of a moment there. So if you just, just keep your eyes closely on uh, Schwantz's wheels for the next couple of laps and you get a good idea how, uh, how his tyres are performing. Now they're coming to the back markers, which could uh, really uh, make Schwantz's day. So Swans now knows how to apply pressure, I think, better than anybody. He really can ride you into the ground. Oh, there is there's little doubt that uh, probably the worst man you could ever have behind you that's never going to give up is Kevin Schwantz. You know, that's why when Beattie won that race at Hockenheim, you had to hand it to Beattie. I mean, he... he uh, oh, that's done uh, Luca a favour. So Catalora gets through, but the back markers have had a good look. Congratulations to them. They had a good look behind them and made sure that Swans really didn't get held up there. If anything, he probably gained half a length. It'll just be interesting to see uh, out of some of the slower corners. That's where you really get a good look at. Oh, yes, got him. So he good comes move. up. Yeah, Kevin Swans takes Catalora with a nice move. It's typical Swans. And goes in deep. And the good that you see, Schwantz is pretty shrewd. He got up the inside of uh, Luca there and went out on his line. Oh, now that, you see, is the tyre just spinning on Catalora's bike. And the reason the handlebars shake as much as that is because of the nature of this circuit. It's a lot of lefts, a lot of rights in quick succession. So what you have to do is have to speed it up, speed the steering of the bike up. And when you do that, you ma it makes it lighter to change direction. It's a very technical thing to explain. It's a bit boring, but basically what it does, you sacrifice the stability of the bike. So you see the bike's handlebars shake a lot and you see it wiggle quite a lot. But um, what you gain is the fact that it flops from side to side a lot easier. Must be scary hanging on when it starts to do the hippy hippy. Well, it's it's a little bit. It goes very quickly. You know, when it go when it breaks away. Normally, when a bike breaks away on the back end, it sort of breaks away and you can catch it. But like where you saw that crash of Rainy, that was a classic what you call steep geometry crash. It just bit one way, bit the other. Cadalora's not that's down on speed bit one way, bit the other, and just flicked him. And that is really basically the way the bikes have to be set up if you want to go quick around this place. And that's why I used to hate it with a passion. Marvellous stuff here, though. Cadalora's going to fight all the way. There's no doubt about that. He hasn't given up and said, I'll settle for second. Oh. He wants to win this one. I'm sure he won't, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, Luke has got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And he knows that uh, Schwantz, if it comes to an all-out do-or-die job, uh, Luca would be prepared to risk, say, sliding off at hairpin. Oh, that's my ladder now. Luca would be prepared to slide off at hairpin, whereas uh, Schwantz wouldn't, because he'd be in the same situation as Rainy. Well, bad luck for the Australian aboard the Kajiva again. Matthew Maladden, gee whiz, he's had no luck over there, has he? Well, no, you know, the, the bike, he didn't even get to race it last time. It stopped on the warming up line. But this is the big race up front. Catalora just screwing everything he can out of the Yamaha as he chases the Suzuki of Kevin Swans. We haven't had a shot at McDoan. We can tell you he's still back in third place, but 
He's back a fair way from these two at the moment. This is a marvellous dice going on here, though. Catalora putting all the pressure back on Kevin Swans. Now, you see, Yamahas have done a, a lot of good work lately because one thing, they've got their bike uh, steering properly now, or a lot better than it was. But also, um, they're definitely not out the ballpark on power. Look at this, right? So there was a little bit of a slipstream there, but nothing to speak of, and Cadalora didn't lose anything there to Schwanz. So the, the, uh, both the, the Yamaha, Honda, and Suzuki now, uh, much of a muchness. There's very little to choose between any of them. Now, Swartz has got to really start to think about the championship here. Well, he's got Catalora doing a desperate kamikaze all over the back of him. Does he want to get involved in that, or should he really maybe let Catalora slip past and just sit in behind him? Well, I think he'll find what he'll do. He'll ride as fast as he wants to ride. And if Catalora, when it gets... Uh, we've got, uh, what, another 10, 19 laps to run now. And when it gets to the last five laps, I think you'll find that Schwantz will have a real go and see if he can pull out. If he can't pull out and Cadalora is still with him, don't be at all surprised to see Schwantz, um, you know, just not let Cadalora have it, but not to, to put up such a fight. But um, don't forget, you know, the big advantage with uh, winning it is you get an extra you get an extra five points. And I don't know whether that's my imagination, but it does Well, he like must be. We haven't seen him for so yeah. long. And there he is, Mick yeah. Doohan. So he's got to be closing on because of the intensity of the battle up in front. Uh, with a dogfight going there, Dylan yes. has closed. He's Go certainly on, closed. Well, he's got bags enough time. If he's made up that amount of ground in the last time we saw him was, what, seven or eight laps ago, he's got enough time. Look at this stuff, though. They're right on the absolute limit of the track. And look at Swartz with the uh, the wheel up in the air. Catalora comes down underneath him. Oh, nice <laughs> move. Good move. Look at Schwantz. This is a classic Schwantz. Look at that. Do what you like, son. Yeah. I'll have it back. <laughs> any, any way you like. It really is the master and the apprentice at the moment. Swans is just beautiful when he takes people up. But look at Catalora, he's just held the power straight on. It's a great little dice. Oh, marvellous, marvellous stuff. Catalora regains the lead. Swans would be saying, hey, I've got a fight on my hands here. I'd never say that Swans would ever let anybody win a race, but the championship must be ticking away in his head. I mean, he knows that Rainey's put the bike down. He can't afford to do the same thing. And now Mick Doohan definitely in touch. Well, you're, you're dead right, Daryl, and what you said earlier on is even more to the point there's only one week they're on an airplane tomorrow to go to america so um it's you know he cannot afford to fall off the thing now there's no doubt whatsoever about that and i think you'll find if mick can get up with them then um you know i'm sure schwantz is going to take no risk whatsoever well there's eight laps to go can can mick i think he can catch him i mean he should be able to get in a touch yes. there it is now i mean you can see it for yourself. He Go was so Mick. far back. He really has put and a right in. And you can see how quick he's going. You see how wide he went on that corner. Not because he ran wide, because he was going that much quicker. Well, and this has been a fabulous ride for Mick Dillon. Look how far he's got the bike down, right on the leg. It's not going to be yes. He's definitely got enough time. Well, great stuff, Mick Dillon, because he's come from a long way back. He was fifth on the grid. We said at the time that didn't matter and it wasn't worrying him too much. He didn't get a chance in practice to get a, a real clear go. There was too much traffic around, but this has been a sensational ride from Doohan. I lost so much ground in the first five or six laps for whatever reason, maybe getting the tyres hot or getting stuck behind, we couldn't really see. But um, to come up as far as he has done, as quickly as he has done, you know, it's uh, got to be in with a chance. Eight laps to run. Yes, definitely he's in with a chance. Look at that, how much distance he's made. OK, buckle up, Australia. This is going to be a ripper race. Stay with us for the last eight. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> Tighten your seatbelts, Australia. Look at this. Doing right on the tail now of Catalora and Swatch. It's been a fabulous ride for Mick Doohan to get back in touch. Look at that. I tell you, you've got to hand it to Doohan. He's done a mammoth job. Look, just over one second behind. And uh, not quite enough. <laughs> if, he's that, if he's that close behind going into the, the long three next-handers, the fast three next-handers, left-handers next time, then he's definitely uh, going to have at least once. 
Yeah. I'm not sure they know he's that close unless their pits have told him because really that's on board with Dua now in behind Swans. I mean, they've been concentrating so much on their own battle, Catalora and Swans, that Dewan wasn't even in the, in, the, in the ballpark. I think you'll find that uh, the last lap, they would have definitely got the message that um, Mick was right up behind them. Um, prior to that, because I'm sure that he made, like in three laps, he made enormous inroads. You know, we didn't see any of it because he just basically appeared out of nowhere. The place where he's going to um, going to be able to do it is if he gets at the beginning of those fast left-hand kinks, the three of them. So you go around this lot, this right-hander at the end here, and I'll tell you if he's close enough for me, because he makes ground through this. He's making a little bit, little bit, little bit. Now, it all depends on the run out of this. Good run out of that one. Right. No, I don't think he's close enough. So it'll take a couple more laps, maybe, for doing to really get close to uh, Swansea. He's just that couple of lengths off that slipstream area. Yes, he's now got he it. makes he's his move. Though, under brakes, and if you can get past Swans under brakes, you've got bigger ones. I just, uh, I, I think that's where he's going to do it. You know, unless he finds enough room to uh, get through in the meantime. The po there's a possibility up into this next one, but he's not close enough there. You see, that was where Swans got Catalora there. But my favourite would be at the end of that uh, long straight because it's so much easier to follow somebody around those three left-hand kinks. Two things, Barry. You've got traffic in front and Catalora, of course, hasn't got Dewan all over the back of him. So he's attacking where really, if anything, Swanson's has got to get a little bit defensive and ride defensive. So it's letting Catalora get a bit more lead. I don't think you'll find that um, Schwantz will be a, doing a defensive job. He'll be trying as hard as he can to um, stay up with Catalora. So he, obviously he knows it mix uh, right with him. But um, I think you'll find he'll just be worrying about Catalora. And if Mick can uh, get him here. Mick's trying up oh. the inside, not close enough. He's cl right, he's close enough now when we get out of this lot. This is where Duan goes quick through these, this next one round here. Now you see, see what sort of, it all depends on the run. You watch this next left-hander here. You see the distance between the two of them, just about the same. I would say he's close enough. That's where is he? Catalora. Yes, he's close There's enough. There's Dewan, Swan's doing up the inside. He'll get him this yes. time by the look of it. No, he can't. <laughs> she Swan's is hard. Yeah. Oh. oh, he's hard on the brake, Swan's. She was he's hard. That is, I'm sure that's the place where he's going to do it. Or in the right hand uh, prior to. Um, got him. Got him. Uh, so yes. doing slips through. <laughs> Take Swans for second place. Now chases Catalora, who has been allowed to open up a bit of a gap because of the dice of Swans and do it. There's Catalora. Ooh, Catalora ran a bit wide there. Doing now second. What a ride. This now is, that, oh, Catalora. Now that's, that was all set up the previous corner because he ran wide going into that right hander and then tried not to lose too much time, got on the power a bit early, and she started shaking. So let's see. Oh, plus we're coming into Piccadilly Circus by the looks of it. It's everybody and their auntie, all the back markers are right in front of him. So this could uh, do Mick an enormous favour here. They've all had a look, though. They know where they are. They know where they are. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one, doesn't well, it? Well, right. you know what I mean. They know yeah. where uh, we're doing at Swanson Cup in Catalora. Here's a shot from Mick's bike. This is going past Swans. Yep. That's Catalora up in front. There he goes. I'd much sooner see that traffic jam yeah, because so I, I think that's going to be quite this exciting. This has got to be Mick's best race that we've watched in, in maybe 18 Ooh. months. Great performance from doing tonight. Whether he wins this or not, now it's been a brilliant ride. Major, major achievement to make up the ground that he has made up. Quite incredible. Now, Mick, if he can get a slipstream off of some of these guys down here. So there's Catalora. Mick has not really lost anything. Oh, anything. He's gained. good one. He's yes. gained. Yes, no Catalora. doubt. No doubt whatsoever. Look. Right now, Mick has got to get to the right-hand side of this guy got it. before the next kink. You see the guy in front of him. Yep. If he can get up the inside of him. Oh, nice one. Now he's in touch. <laughs> Brilliant through the Save traffic. Save it a flavour. Get a load of that. That is good stuff. Threading a high-speed <laughs> needle there. Mick, oh, Dewan's foot come off the peg too. 
but he's right in touch with Catalora. Oh, gee, it's hard here because you'd like to see Catalora win his own Grand Prix, but I'd rather see I Mick know, win I'd it. sooner see him win. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather see Mick win it. What a ride from doing. He's lost a little bit of gain there. That was when no, the foot came off. Catalora lost a little bit there because the back end broke away. And uh, I, I go back to the favourite old three left-handers again. You wait until we get to that because I think that is where we're really going to see a major move. 20... Only three laps to go, Baz. Yeah, I know. Just, I know I keep on about these three left-handers, but they're really, it's, they're the only corners on the circuit that you can really tell a story from. You see, doing is really quick through there. Now watch, see how he gets it set up out of this. Thing. See. Well, I think now you watch, just there. watch the heads. Yeah, but you lose a little bit to gain a bit on the. You get a bit of a run. See, sometimes you go in a little bit slow to really straighten. Yes, not so shabby. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Listen to the crowd, though. I mean, they just they're willing this man on Catalora. They want him to win. Doing, believe you me, was so far back we'd forgotten about him. Wasn't anywhere in sight, and just all of a sudden, put it on and got the uh, the rhythm going. And now here he is challenging for the lead. Got to hand it to Doing. He is the master of going faster than here. He was a long, long way behind. You look at the beginning of this race; he was miles behind. Well, look how they dropped Swans off. Swans has yep. now thought, right, I'll take the third points because he knows Rainey is out of business and perhaps out of business for next week. Doing though now clawing all over the back of Catalora. Catalora fighting all the way. He wants to win this, his home Grand Prix. This will be a real scrap now for a couple of laps. Believe you me, it's all go. Yeah, Schwantz has done the sensible thing. Just stay out of it, get the points, because, you know, to get to get as close as he is now and throw it away, you know, it would be unforgivable. Hard to believe that Mick Doohan can get as close from so far back and just can't get that extra couple of legs. Oh, I do. I, you watch, watch those left hands. That's, I'm convinced, that's where he's going to do it. Where he'll oh, do it? Yeah. If, it all depends on the run through this. Well, running out of laps, 28 to 29. Better run this time, right? This is on board. Now watch. Just watch the seat of Catalora's bike. Not it's close enough for a slipstream. No, it's still not close enough. Still some traffic in front, but I think they'll probably get him in the right part of the circuit. Yes, they have. Well, Catalora's through, mixed through. Good on the brakes there. Listen to the acceleration. It's not sounding too bad, actually. It's not spinning, spinning the back end a lot. Well, Catalora's doing a great job out in front, doing everything. He's throwing at him, trying to get round him. But Catalora hanging uh, on. I can imagine, you know, Catalora, his home Grand Prix, he, his Grand Prix that he thought he would have no possibility of winning because he wasn't allowed to if, uh, if Wayne hadn't have fallen off, if Rady hadn't have fallen off. So, you know, he's, he's obviously going to try everything. Last lap. <laughs> well, regardless of what you say, Doohan's ride tonight, the most brilliant I've seen in, in probably 18 months. I mean, he has made up an amazing amount of ground. And I mean, the way he got past Swans, dropped him off, Swans said, hey, you can have it. Right, now, Catalora knows how important these three left-handers are on the last lap especially. And uh, at that distance, you now you watch Catalora is pulling away through there. That's flat. Uh, I don't think he's going to do it. Uh, Mick just can't get close enough to come to grips under brakes. Yes, he can. You think so? Yeah. I think no. not. Catalora no. shuts him down again. So doing now, running out of space. There is a chance. There's a possible... Oh, no, no chance. Forget it. End of story. Well, there you saw it. The and that was... Wobble. Mick was... His chance was there, up on the inside there. And what Mick was trying to do was get everything on as hard as he could, as much power as he could. And the back end just broke away. And uh, it just lost him that sort of millisecond. It's and all about rhythm, isn't it? It's all about coming out of one and setting mm -hmm. up the next one. So Catalora hanging on, doing now, throwing everything he can at him. But Catalora looks like he will hang on. I can't see anywhere between here and the start line that there's any possibility. 
Oh, Dylan, brilliant ride, brilliant ride. We're seeing Dylan oh, back to his look best. At look at the bike, shaking all underneath the man as he just tries desperately as a last lunge no. to throw it. But there they go. It's still Catalora, still Mick oh, Dillon right how up behind him. Is that? Dillon trying all he can, but it's all over. Catalora hangs on, takes the Grand Prix, and coming across the line is Kevin Swansea. Look at He's happy to get the points. A most brilliant ride from these two. Catalora takes his home Grand Prix from the Australian Michael Dillon, and I've got to say that Mick was brilliant tonight, but you can't deny this man. Oh, no, no doubt whatsoever. Luca, you know, it was a well-deserved race. Where, where Mick got it sideways a little bit, that's what you do. You try. So look at this. It's going to be an absolute bananas bedlam. This here. is like shades of Phillip Island when Gardner won down there. The Australians came out. Look at the Italians. <laughs> they come out in their hundreds. Very dangerous stuff, this. These bikes, I mean, they're very hard to control down low. Oh, that's going to be for Rainey. Yeah, Rainey being airlifted out of the circuit. That's the ambulance up against the uh, helicopter now. We'll try and bring you up to date before the telecast shuts down. It's very difficult to get information when he really hasn't gone back to the base hospital as such. He's been into the ambulance and straight to the plane. But remember, they do have to race next week, and it would be doubtful on what we've seen, and I'm only saying that on what we've seen, that Rainey will be ready to uh, to contest that race. Look at these people out here in the circuit. That's uh, from Mick Doohan's point of view, quite dangerous. Oh, it's frightening because, especially if you're following somebody, because what happens, you follow somebody and you just pull out to go past them. And then all of a sudden you've got someone standing in front of you. It's frightening. So Rainey getting transferred over to the chopper now. And uh, of course we did see the same thing happen in the British Grand Prix when uh, Nigel Mansell won there at Silverstone. The people coming out in their thousands. Well, as I said, we've seen it at Phillip Island. And look at this. The We're worst, trying to get through that. The worst thing in the world you could do is stop, especially in Italy, because by the time you came out the crowd, the tank would be gone. <laughs> OK, well, there you have it. It's been a very, very exciting race. A brilliant performance from Mick Dillon, a brilliant performance from Luca Catalora as he throws the wheel up. We'll take a break. Lots more still to come. Highlights of the 250 race. And don't leave us yet. Welcome back. Well, what a race that was. The 500's brilliant ride from Michael Doohan. Perhaps the best ride I've seen in a long, long time. Maybe 18 months or so. Gee whiz, he, he rode with that old verve, didn't he? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You know, if you'd have said after four laps that Mick was mm. going to be up challenging for the lead, I'd have said you were mad. You know, that was the best ride I've seen him have for a long, long time. And he was trying real hard at the end of it. Well, of course, the 250 race, uh, we want to show you some of the highlights. In fact, the closing stages of that race. Then we'll come back and show you the celebrations of the 500 winners. So don't go away. Here's the highlights. The last couple of laps of the 250 race. Out in front, bike 17. He had a real good dice going with Harada, but that uh, all came to an end when Harada dropped it. I don't think I've ever seen anybody wave their head around as much as uh, Jean-Philippe Rogier does. You, you watch when you see... Uh see a front on shot team his head sort of nods from side to side up and down and uh, it's quite a strange thing he it's not wear a walkman it's... <laughs> it's something you don't often say well you never see with bikes with cars if someone does that you know they're getting tired but uh, it's nothing to do with tiredness with Rudy. his head just sort of bobs up and down like one of those things you hang on the back window of a car he might have a theme from rocky happening inside that helmet to keep him motivated I don't think he needs any motivation at the moment. <laughs> Great colour scheme, that bike. Really it nice. It does look good. And here's the uh, the sister bike, 13. Doing also a great job. Reggiani, he's battling this pack for third. And he's got it at the moment with two laps to go. And he watch if he's... See what I mean? His head's... A duh, 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 you know. Maybe he has got a walk. <laughs> I could be right. Groove into right the once. sound. <laughs> So, Rusia now knows that all he's got to do is keep it on the black stuff for another lap and a bit. That's good. It was really unfortunate that, uh, the, yeah, on the black stuff and the red and white stuff, that uh, Rusia broke down in Czechoslovakia because uh, Reggiani was saying that, you know, almost certainly Rusia would have won that. And that would have been, if he wins tonight, would have been um, three Grand Prix on the trot. 
Pretty so nice. this is the third win for the in a row for Aprilia. She wears this time to uh, to really flex a muscle. Well, really, they're getting back now where they were at the end of last season, basically. It's, uh, that would have been quite an achievement for um, for Ruggier to have won three Grand Prix in a row, wouldn't it? But, um, I'm sure Aprilia are pretty happy if they do. Reggiani still holding third place in front of the snapping pack. Caparossi, we haven't seen much of him, but he's still in second place, a long way ahead of that group. Some traffic coming into play. It won't worry Ruggier now. He knows he's got plenty of time. He doesn't have to make any unnecessary or silly moves. Now, it just shows you how competitive you say that. He's getting a big sideways. Of saying that, it shows you how competitive the 250 class is, because just now, the last lap, that's, as far as I can remember, the, back, the first back marker they've overtaken. And that's a 27-lap race round here. And uh, that's, it's very that's good. not bad going. At 73 is a guy called David Bulega, who's uh, one of the wild card entries. So it's taken the entire race yeah. for the leaders to lap him. That is good. Well, that's only one guy that's going to lap him. The other chaps aren't even going to get up with him. So Rouge now moves past the back markers. Still in command, still in the lead. He's had to fight for this, though. This has been no picnic ride. Well, at the end of the day, don't forget, he's, he's well, so far, he's upright, isn't he? And uh, um, Biaggi threw it down the road, as did Okada. And they can, you can say what you like. You know, it's uh, to finish first. First, you have to finish, don't you? He looks a bit big for the bike. He seems to have to sort of tuck himself down and bring his elbows in. He just looks too big for the bike. Well, he's not. He's not. Um, he's not oversized by any stretch of the imagination. In actual fact, he rode. That's it. He's got it. So Ruggia now comes across the line to take the Italian 250 race. Well Wonderful done. win for Ruggia and Aprilia. They're third in a row. Good ride. Well deserved. Isn't it? Caparossi comes across in second, throws the wheel up. Crowd would love that. Oh, it's a good wheelie too. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Plenty of elevation from. Oh, Caparossi. look at Here's this. And Loris is going to be second. So this is the battle for third. Let's and Loris Reggiani. So Reggiani gets it. Good stuff. Gee, Loris. open up a bit too on that last yeah. lap. He gets across the line in third. Fourth was great. <laughs> there was a bit of wheel bagging going on for fourth. Whoa, there we go. So Ruggia takes first place. Caparossi is second. Reggiani. He comes in in third place. So Aprilia one and three. So just recapping those results. Good race that one too. Ruggia Caparossi. Yeah, Reggiani, Braddle, Pooch and Aoki. Championship positions. Harada still leading by just a little bit from Caparossi, Jean-Philippe Ruggier, Massimiliano Biaggi, Loris Reggiani and Helmut Braddle. Real shame that Harada and uh, Biaggi fell off. Yeah, there were two crashes in this race. We'll show you those crashes now, Baz, you talk us through them because uh, they were critical stages when both riders were being very competitive. Right, this is Biaggi. Now watch the back end of this bike. You see the back end just break away. This is more or less the same kind of crash as um, Rainey would have had. Flick that way, but then Rainey spat him straight on the floor. And Biaggi was a little bit lucky because it came back and collected him a little and sort of slowed it up. Now, watch the back wheel. It just hit him on the shoulder, but as luck would have it, it didn't come down on him like really, really mega hard. This is another angle of it. You see there, just, you see the red bike, that's Harada. And you just see, oh, very nasty Biaggi and his tank and his biking bits disappearing off the edge of the circuit. But luckily enough, he was OK. And then that is poor old Harada. And Harada was arguing the guys to try, I want to get back on the circuit. And the marshals were saying, it's time to park it, my son. Oh, of a way, priest. Yeah, he was really cranky, wasn't he? Because he felt confident well, he could get it back on. And, uh, and at the time, you said, well, he should be allowed well, to. Well, he should the bike be allowed okay. to. Yeah. You know, the guy was all right. He wasn't knocked out or anything. The bike was OK. I mean, silly, but there you go. All right, now, the word from Italy is that Wayne Rainey has uh, compression fractures of the vertebrae, but he is conscious and he is up. And it's only just come through from uh, Mazzano that the uh, compressed... Uh, fractures of the vertebrae. So, uh, would you think, knowing what you know about injuries, he could ride next week? No, not if you've got compression fracture of any vertebrae and that. And uh, it's, well, you wouldn't be allowed to ride for a start off. And the pain you get from, especially up in the top of your neck, and that is purgatory. So. Hence the neck brace. Okay, we're going to take a break, then we're going to come back with all the celebrations of the 500 winners. And uh, boy, there'll be some there, I can tell you. So, stay with us.
Flags are flying, and one of them an Australian flag there. And there's Luca Catalora, the wreath around the, uh, the neck. And have a look at that, Baz, the Italian flags flying oh, there high. Go, there we go, actually. He made a bit of front page of everything and the back page of everything tomorrow. And it's great, you see, because the Italians want a hero in the 500 class, and uh, Catalora is the ideal man. But you've got to hand it to Doohan tonight. That was sensational, right? Yeah, well, Kevin Swans, too. Very, very popular around the world. You can see the trophies coming out now for the, uh, for the winning teams. And, of course, tonight that was the uh, Marlborough Yamaha team. They accept that trophy. Michael Doohan sitting on the other, or standing on the other side there as we wait for the national anthem. Brilliant ride from him tonight, no doubt about that. This crowd, though, lapping up the moment that they've waited so long for an Italian to win the Italian 500cc Grand Prix. And uh, as you can see, they're all coming out in the circuit now. They'll come down in hordes. And this uh, Luca Catalora, he will be lauded right throughout Italy tonight. You can see him standing there waiting for his national anthem. It's playing. You don't recognise it. Well, you're right. <laughs> we shouldn't talk over it. So the crowd now waiting for the champagne to be sprayed. That moment you saw was when Luca Catalora came around and, of course, Michael Doohan came up beside him and they shook hands. And as that's, I said, a brilliant ride from doing. Yeah, that's a long time since an Italian won a 500 Grand Prix. I would think it would be Franco Uncini in 1982 when he won the World Championship. But uh, it's great. I mean, this will do motorcycling no harm whatsoever in Italy. I mean, it's a passionate country for, for motorbikes and it will just lift the sails of everybody. There you go, Catalora, well-deserved win. Great ride from Dern, really sensible ride from Schwantz. Kaczynski fourth, Barros fifth, and Creville sixth. Championship points, five points between Schwantz and Rainey, Dern third, Beatty, Catalora, and Ito. And I can't imagine, Daryl, with compression fractures of vertebrae. No any way, shape or form that um, Rainey will ride in America. Well, it was a big shunt, wasn't it? I mean, he went down very hard. As you said at the time, during the call, that he's gone down on his shoulder, thinking it was probably a, a shoulder injury, but that's when it's all been compressed. Well, what happens, it goes, the bike goes light. It went like that, and then normally it goes like that and like that again, but it just went like that and straight like that, and it just flings you down so hard on your head and your shoulder and that, and basically what compression fracture is when you get a bang on the top of the head and it just vertebrae goes inside the other one. Well, let's have a look now for because the next uh, Grand Prix, uh, that's the 500C uh, USA Grand Prix, and that's on Monday, October the 13th, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, the US Open tennis is on at the same time, so that's the reason that we've, uh, we're on Monday, this time coming around the US Open Championships, of course, tonight from Flushing Meadows, New York. That's live, great place to watch tennis. Terrific auditorium there, and that's at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ian Chappell, I'll make you Pelly. We'll, uh, we'll guide you through that one, and that should be really good. And that little red badge that you see that I'm wearing today, that's Kick a Goal for Life. That's uh, asking all of the people right around Australia to perhaps just donate a dollar or two each, and if everybody did that, we'd raise something like $28 million. They're looking for $4 million to open a cancer research uh, headquarters here in Sydney beside the uh, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, and it's been a fabulous cause, and everybody around Australia was great, particularly the Queenslanders. I couldn't believe the response from Queensland today, and I guess Queensland have a, a better understanding of sun cancers and that sort of thing because of the weather up there. But uh, Queensland, congratulations. A great, uh, a great response today from you this afternoon. OK, been a big day, hasn't it? With the footy and the, and the, and the telethon and the motorbikes and the whole thing. It just, made, it just annoys me when people are struggling for money for cancer and they're going to build Paul Keating a new house for $10 million. <laughs> I know where I'd sooner spend the $10 million. Yeah. Send it in and we'll get the kids and everybody else. Uh, away on their cancer thing. OK, hope you've enjoyed the races tonight and uh, it was a great ride from Mick Doohan. Let's hope the Laguna Seca race is just as good and remember Wayne Rainey, keep your fingers crossed because I'd really like to be able to see him defend the championship. We saw Mick lose it that way last time round. See you next time round on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Nine's Wide World of Sports. The 1993...